Hey everyone, welcome in. Today I want to teach you a little bit about survivability, damage reduction, and just how to prepare for the Avatar of Zir. As we saw today in the Diablo 4 campfire, the Avatar of Zir is going to be very, very challenging. It's going to be very easy for you to die. So you need to make sure that you have a very, very solid understanding of how to survive. Open up your stats and materials pane here and look at your resistances. All of these resistances should say 70% and they should be colored green like this. That means that you have the maximum base resistance. Now you can actually increase these maximum resistances up to 85% as you can see on the tooltip. And what's really cool is that this is maybe one of the few places on this stats and materials sheet that you can actually trust. So these stats are gonna be accurate based on the actual resistances that are on your character. Um, so make sure that these are capped and the first step that you have to being very tanky and very survivable is done. The second step that you want to do is hit your armor cap. Now armor cap is a little bit more fuzzy because the armor cap is based on physical damage that you take from monsters of equal level. And that equal level part is very important because in the Avatar of Zir, monsters start at level 155. Now, based on the data and the theory crafting, we think that level 155 armor cap is around 13,600 or so, and it only goes up from there. So what you really wanna do is you wanna make sure that your armor plus your disobedience affix gets you somewhere in the range of 14,500 to 15,000 armor to make sure that you hit that cap. Now getting your armor this high is actually pretty challenging and there's a few places where you can get a very valuable armor percent modifier. That includes your helm, your chest slot, you can get it also on your pants, you can get it on your amulet as well. So these are really valuable slots for getting total armor percent. And you'll probably want to have it on at least a few of these. So at least for my build, I have this on chest. I have it on pants. If I could, if I could roll a amulet that doesn't have movement speed here and instead swaps that for armor, I would prefer that. But this unfortunately is my best amulet right now. Uh, but yeah, getting armor on these very few slots here is gonna be really key for you to get that armor cap. Now, everything after you hit your resistance cap and your armor cap gets a little bit more challenging. And this is where damage reduction comes in. So damage reduction is very, very powerful and it's quite confusing and difficult to stack. So let's talk about it first on probably the most important damage reduction slot that you have on your character, which is the leg slot. Now, right now I'm wearing these legs. These are very, very good. They have max damage reduction from close, damage reduction from shadow damage over time, and they have damage reduction in total armor all on the same piece. It's a very nice piece, but you'll notice I have several comparison pieces down here that uh, we're gonna talk about here. So the first and most important thing about damage reduction is that each stat line that uh, that rolls higher is more valuable to you. So let's take a look at how damage reduction actually gets calculated in the damage equation. And for that, I'm gonna open the, uh, the best, most complicated calculation device of all time. It's the Windows standard calculator. So we can have 20% damage reduction. That's what I have on these from damage from close. And when you calculate that out, that's 0.202 damage reduction. But the way damage reduction gets calculated into the damage equation is what's called reverse multiplicative. So that 0.202 is actually gonna get subtracted from one and you're gonna get 0.798 uh, damage taken out of one, right? Out of, uh, this is a percentage, right? So. What we're going to do is we're going to be able to calculate what the multiplication effect of, mul of stacking multiple different sources of damage reduction are. So let's say 
that we had two sources of 10% damage reduction, and we are comparing those two sources of 10% damage reduction with this one source of damage reduction from close 20.2. Now you would think, hey, two sources of damage reduction of at 10% and one source of damage reduction at 20%, those are basically the same thing, right? Well, actually, no. So let's do the math. So first of all, uh, 0.1 subtracted from one is 0.9, right? So if we wanted to take those two sources of 10% damage reduction and put them together, we're gonna do 0.9 times 0.9, and we get this 0.81, we subtract that back from one, and we get 0.19 or 19%. So in other words, if we want to compare apples to apples here, one source of 20.2% damage reduction gives 20.2% damage reduction, and two sources of 10% damage reduction actually only give 19% damage reduction. So it gets a lot more complicated when you start thinking of it this way. This is why roles that have a higher range are actually significantly more valuable. They're not, for example, if you look here, damage reduction here can roll up to 10.7% and damage reduction from close enemies can roll up to 20.2%. That 20.2% is more valuable than you would otherwise anticipate because of the nature of how inverse multiplication works. Because of that, when you're statting out your items and you're trying to figure out how am I gonna make my character really super, super tanky, you want to really look at these high numbers of damage reduction and value them higher. So for example, Shaco's 20% damage reduction, that is a lot of damage reduction on one stat and that is far more valuable than you would expect. Same thing from damage reduction from close, damage reduction from distant, damage reduction from elemental, every class kind of has a different element they can get, and damage reduction from fortified, these sources are more powerful than you would otherwise expect. Another one here worth mentioning is damage reduction from injured. There are a couple of builds, namely Barbarian and Druid, have ways of staying injured while they're fighting. And if you can stay injured, damage reduction while injured actually has the highest damage reduction uh, capability in the entire game. Now, not every class can do this, so your mileage may vary here, and it's only for these very specific mechanics, and these very specific mechanics may not even fit into your build, even if you are playing these classes. So keep that in mind as you're statting your character out. That said, for me, I have sort of a personal preference on which particular damage reduction stats that I value and where I like to place them. So let's go over that now. That way you can just get sort of an idea of how I can survive in Nightmare Dungeon 100 on hardcore while reading Twitch chat and feel very, very comfortable while doing all of that. So first, Harlequin Crest or the Shaco, I think, is very, very good. 20% damage reduction, like I said, it it sort of hits harder than you would actually expect it to. And so this, uh, this item is just, it's so good already with the plus four ranks to skills, but the DR that you're getting here just hits that much harder. The chest slot is really, really important. Being able to get total armor and three DR rolls all on the same item is very, very valuable. And what's more important is that you can get those DR rolls really, really high. You can get close, distant, and you can also get your elemental roll. In my case, shadow damage reduction, uh, damage reduction from shadow damage over time affected enemies. Now, personally, I would prefer that that DR shadow over time roll on this particular item be higher. And I would have also preferred that this damage reduction from distant be fortified in order for this to, item to be optimal. But this is still a pretty nice item. Uh, going to the leg slot, legs can also roll total armor, so I really like a high total armor roll here. Uh, and then, again, this is very similar to the chest slot in that you can get three DR rolls. So damage reduction from close, damage reduction from your elemental DR source, 
And finally, damage reduction from Fortified, I think, is optimal. But if you can't get that, then just go for whatever you can on that third roll, especially if you have really high rolls on these other two rolls. Going to the, the boots, there are a couple of unique boots, namely Flicker Step, that can actually give you damage reduction. Uh, damage reduction from close is very valuable, I think, especially if you're going to be using Flicker Step and you're going to be evading through enemies. Uh, this is just an excellent uh, set of boots. I, I got a really great roll here on these boots. Going up here to the to the choker, you can actually get up to four DR rolls on your amulet slot, but I think most people should just do two to three, and let me explain why. The amulet slot can roll some of your most potent damage stats, and the Avatar of Zir is not just going to be a survivability game, but also a race against damage game. So if you can't do enough damage, you're not gonna be able to kill the enemies. So you really do need to prioritize some damage on this slot. And so my preferred amulet right now would be one armor roll, two DR rolls, and one plus three ranks roll to whatever you can get. And sometimes I might prefer, instead of this movement speed, um, I might prefer something like a damage roll or something like shadow damage or shadow damage over time um, for my particular build. But this, uh, this movement speed roll, this is really your wiggle room on this slot. Uh, for the rings, you can't really roll any DR on the rings. So for me, I'm rolling two, uh, my build uses two unique rings. But what's really great about these slots is that you can get maximum life on them. And so having maximum life, if you can, is very, very valuable. If, you're, if your particular build uses a rare ring, try to get a maximum life roll. That's going to help you survive uh, even more. And if you have a barrier-oriented build, keep in mind that maximum life also increases the size of your barrier uh, there as well. Finally, this offhand slot. Now, this is unique to necromancers. Necromancers can equip a shield, which is why necromancers are some of the tankiest uh, classes in the game, uh, of all the classes in the game right now. Now I have a few shields. This is my favorite shield right now. It has three DR stats, close shadow damage over time, and fortified uh, the three that I value the highest. And it also has maximum life. Now, that maximum life slot, again, it's a bit fuzzy. You could roll cooldown reduction there. You could roll resist all there, which is a very valuable roll on a shield. You could also roll crit there or some other damage stat. So if you're having problems in Avatar of Zero with, let's say, not doing enough damage, then having another shield where you have one or two different rolls might actually help you break through um, a place where you're stuck. All right, let's talk about this leg slot because this leg slot I think is gonna be important for a lot of folks, namely the swap into Tabalt's Will. Now, um, for you rogues out there, you're probably going to be forced into Tabalt's Will. You're probably not even going to have this option, but a lot of other classes are going to have this option between rolling a insanely tanky item here with armor and 3DR stats, or an insanely high damage item with a 40X multiplier and a and one DR stat and a damage multiplier and some other, you know, potion capacity, like useless, fairly useless stats there, right? So this is gonna be something that you wanna keep in your back pocket. If you find that your character is too tanky, then this is where you can swap into Bolt's Will and try to do more damage if you're trying to damage race and or the reverse, right? If you find that your character is dying a lot in Avatar of Zero and you're, you're wasting those very valuable sigils, then you can swap into a very, very tanky pair of pants. Just to give you one more example here, for my build, I do damage over time with Corpse Explosion. So I do have this pair of pants here uh, that has actually three DR stats. It has DR close, DR uh, shadow damage over time, and DR fortified, uh, which is actually giving me higher damage reduction, but I don't have that total armor roll. 
and in its place, I have four ranks to Corpse Explosion. So this is something that I'm gonna have available in my stash if I find that I'm not doing enough damage and I'm willing to trade off a little bit of my armor or I find that I'm able to tweak my build just a little bit to get over that armor cap and or I get an armor roll on my amulet, for example, then I can get these ranks to corpse explosion here to increase my damage. In other words, what I really want you to think about as you're getting ready for Abattoir of Zir is think about all of these different slots and where you have a little bit of wiggle room where you might be able to trade off a little bit of damage for survivability or vice versa. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned a little bit about survival and damage reduction, and I'll see you in the abattoir. Peace.